Hello everyone and welcome back to the West Garfield Park Youth Council. It's me once again, David Elam, President and Mayor of the West Garfield Park Youth Council, here to bring you another fire and lovely show this evening. We have another phenomenal guest with me with me this evening, with us this evening, and we want to highlight her and let her educate you all on our topic this evening. Good evening, everyone. My name is David Elam, and I'm the President Emeritus of the West Garfield Park Youth Council, which is sponsored by Fathers Who Care. Fathers Who Care is a not-for-profit organization on the west side of Chicago within the West Garfield Park community. Again, everyone, my name is David Elam, and I'm the President Emeritus of the West Garfield Park Youth Council. The West Garfield Park Youth Council is comprised of 30 youth, which has increasingly grown since our last season whose main focus in our neighborhood is to be nonviolent youth citizens and today's future leaders in our neighborhoods and across the city. We invite people from all over, especially youth, to come out and see what we're all about. Our show will be scheduled every Thursday at 7 o'clock p.m. Again, that's every Thursday at 7 o'clock p.m. We encourage calls from people watching all over to please call us in with your questions and comments at 312-738-1060. Again, that's 312-738-1060. Well, everyone, I'm going to get right into it, and I'm going to give the guests to my right uh, this time to introduce herself. Hi, I'm Zerlina Smith. I am the founder and ex executive director of Increase the Harvest, and I'm here today to represent our Mothers Who Care program. Oh, it's an honor to have you on our show uh, this evening, Miss Lerlina. Well, thank you for having me. What a pleasure to be here with the youth, the next generation of leadership. You're watching a live interactive television broadcast brought to you by Can TV Channel 21. During the next 25 minutes, we're going to be discussing the topic of effective parenting in the lives of our young people. Again, that's effective parenting in the lives of our young people. And I believe you can ascertain some of those thoughts about effective parenting because you do a lot of things in the community involved with parents and things like that. So we want to get right into that. I have a few questions for you if that's okay. That's fine. Okay, um, our, my first question to you is, Ms. Zarlena, um, what does it mean exactly? What does it mean to be an effective parent? First of all, um, I don't think anyone is an expert at saying that they're an effective parent. What I think, when we think about parenting our kids in 2017, we have to not just look at parenting, we have to look at being a friend and being engaged in our children's lives in 2017. Effective parenting is pretty much more hands-on. And I see we have our first caller of the evening. We're going to okay. ascertain those calls. Hello, caller. You're on, you're on the line with Ms. Zerlina Smith. Your comment or question, please. Do parents know everything that goes on with their children? Mm -hmm. Can you please repeat that question? I didn't hear you. Perfect. Do parents know everything that goes on with their children? I believe parents should know 99% of what's going on with their children, considering... Mm -hmm what's going on right now just on the west side of Chicago with the high um, prison school to prison pipeline with the high STD rates HIV with the high um, gun violence when you think of what is too much information for a parent to know in 2017 I think that it's not enough not knowing who your child is with who your child is pretty much associating with because whether it's a friend or a relationship you want to always make sure that you're engaged and you're involved because if anything was to happen to your child I think that it would be devastating to anyone. Mm. So it's safe to say that parents should know everything that goes on in their child's life, correct? 99%. I mean, we, we need to get back to the basics of what I remember. I'm a lot older than you um, mm. growing up. The Sunday dinners are missing, at least. You know, we, we have to sometimes sit down and get to know our parents. Mm -hmm. And just like 
kids, parents need to get to know their kids. And without the, the communication line, it makes it really, really hard to know what either person is dealing with because we all know as we age, we change with time. So I think 99% is enough information that a child can keep 1% to themselves. And you hit on something about uh, communication uh, between a parent and a child. Why, why is that so, so important in that relationship? between that parent and that child? Why should communication be a big asset in the relationship from a parent to a child? I think it's very important because communication is a pretty much a, a life lesson. I have an eight-year-old, I'm a mother of an eight-year-old, and I started late, yes I did, but she's my world. And I would read books and I would research how does communication work. My daughter's eight, and I'm telling you, we sit down and we debate over french fries, over over anything. She can go to a restaurant, she can order her own food, because what I thought was best for her just to learn the basic um, vocabulary skills was to be able to articulate what it is that she liked and what it was that she didn't like. So communication plays a big part. My daughter goes shopping and can pick out her own shoes because she's going to tell me, Mommy, I don't like those shoes. So, and it helps because why buy something that she doesn't like at eight? All right. Okay, next question. What resources should be provided so that parents and children can have a better connection? That's a very big question. Resources right now, I believe, especially in black communities or communities of color, is so hard because you have the poverty wages that most of our parents live on in the city of Chicago. So just recently in the state of Illinois, matter of fact, yesterday, the state just passed a bill for $15 minimum wage. Wow. And now it's just waiting on the governor to actually sign off on it. So you think if a parent made actual living wages, they could spend as much time as they wanted with their child instead of paying market rate rent, living in a poverty stricken community. Mm. And I see we have a few more calls. Is it all right if we entertain a few more calls? Yes. Ms. Yes. Okay. Yes. Carla, thank you so much for calling. You're on the air with Miss Serlina. Your comment or question, please. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Do you hear me? Yes. Okay. You know, I, I don't know kids having kids. They just don't learn. And a great program like this seems just to go to waste. What else, besides a good program like this, help the young kids get, you know, get out of the, the hole that they're in? Because it just seems that it gets worse and worse and worse instead of better with shows like this that are on TV. Hmm. Thank you. Okay. So I believe, uh, oops, I'm so sorry. Excuse me for that. Um, I believe the man was ascertaining about um, what other programs besides these should be involved or given to better the lives of young people to make sure young people are okay and everything like that. What other programs besides these should be presented? Okay. Well. As I stated, I am the founder of Increase the Harvest. It was some. It was an organization that was formed in my kitchen by a bunch of women after I did a political run. Mm -hmm. um, when you think of programs that need to be started, we have collaborated, and I'm so thankful to Fathers Who Care mm -hmm. for even allowing Mothers Who Care to come apart from an entity as a, a pretty much their wing. Mm -hmm. So when you think of programs, think of something that has real job skills, job training, entrepreneurship, um, actual arts. You know, most of our kids are very articulate. Mm -hmm. They can rap, they can do poetry, they can paint. Turn all that into a enterprise for an individual. And as the old saying go, if you teach a man to fish, then he'll never go hungry. Mm -hmm. So those programs are out here, just like the Yes Chicago program, the Tap Into the Leadership Academy, mm -hmm. Youth Empowerment Service. They're doing fabulous work as well and their entity with Fathers Who Care. So when you think of all the things that are out here, it's just a matter of us collaborating and getting together and making things work as one instead of us being all over the place for our children. 
Mm, it's a good thing you mentioned uh, Yes Chicago. For those of you who are just tuning in, uh, my name is David Elam. I'm the President Emeritus of the West Garfield Park Youth Council. And my guest this evening is Ms. Zerlina Smith. And we're discussing the topic of effective parenting in the lives of our young people. And it's a good thing you touched on Yes Chicago. For those of you who are watching, Fathers Who Care in collaboration with Yes Chicago is currently seeking employers for job training and educational purposes. And they're currently looking for vendors and employers. So if you are an employer that offers job training and things like that, job programs, job etiquette, work readiness opportunities for young people, please get in touch with Fathers Who Care. To get in touch with them, please contact our main office at 773-287-5821. Again, that's 773-287-5821. Also, Fathers Who Care in collaboration with the West Garfield Park Community Stakeholders and the West Garfield Park Youth Council will be hosting its annual monthly community forum entitled Young People Can Be What They See, where we will be highlighting young people that have gone off to college, that came back, and just are blatantly success unto the community. Uh, that will take place June the 12th at 6 o'clock p.m. The address is 230 North Comar. That's with the Tilton Park District. Again, that event will be happening June 12th, 2017 at 6 p.m. If you want to get in touch about that event or other events that we have coming up, please contact Fathers Who Care at 773-287-5821. Again, that's 773-287-5821. And I see we have another caller. Hello, Carla. Thank you so much for calling. You're on the air with Ms. Zarlina Smith. Your comment or question, please. Yes, good evening. I'm so happy to see West Garfield Park. You come go back again. This is Ms. Griffin from the South Side. And I want to say I salute the young lady that's sitting next to you. I would like to ask her, why is it that we, as a group of people, always want to separate the young men and women? Because, number one, when domestic violence is talked about, they focus on nothing but female. Mm. When they don't understand, males, too, have been a part of domestic violence. And just as you speak today are talking about the young, young ladies and things, we got to collaborate where we work together to support these young people, these young adults, because they're our non-generation. They're not the future. They're our non-generation. Right. And I hope to meet you because I believe you're doing a wonderful job. And thank you so much for accepting the call. And have a wonderful day and evening by now. Oh, thank you so much. Um, once again, Increase the Harvest was formed for a very big broad of things. Um, we deal with veterans, domestic violence. Increase the harvest, when you think about it, deals with housing. It deals with ex-offenders. It deals with a community, a community issue. So Mothers Who Care is never one to step back and just take on girls. Uh, Mothers Who Care is very thankful once again to have Fathers Who Care, which is a seasoned organization, to be able to mentor us to make sure that all the services that we bring to not just our young women, which can range from anywhere to 16 to 24 and 24 to 40, um, it, it's the model of bringing one group collectively together. You will see me many of places. I am an organizer. You will see me sitting at many of tables with fathers, mothers, children of any walk of any life. So we are here for everyone. Mothers Who Care will make sure we take care of all our people. And our people consist of our boys, our girls, um, our babies, all ages. There's no limit. And when you look at what's going on, like you said, with domestic violence, we will make sure that our young men issues if they're in a domestic situation be put at the forefront as well so we're not just going to take sides with just because we're saying we're mothers we're doing a parenting component together and it's going to take a, a father and a mother to do what's right for our children today miss zarlina 
I just want to say I'm loving you this evening. I could just sit here all day and just hear you listen and talk and, and just educate. You're doing a phenomenal job. But the more you talk, the more calls we get. And that's what I like. <laughs> okay. So let's entertain these calls and keep this thing rolling. Hello, Carla. Thank you so much for calling. You're on the air with Ms. Zarlina Smith. Your comment or question, please. What is the biggest issue parents face today dealing with their children? Mm. What is the biggest issue parents face today while dealing with their children? Not having enough time. Um, time is everything, and that goes back to what's lacking in our community. Once again, we have a community that's full of very big ideas, full of loving people, and we live on poverty wages. We can't walk to our jobs. We barely can afford to take transportation to get to our jobs. So the biggest issue is making sure that our community has living wages and can provide for their family to do like other communities or other cultures do to actually take vacations and, and not be so stressed out. High blood pressure and heart attacks is the number one killer in black communities. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's all due to just the everyday stress of life. And I know that if or as my child get older, I would want to make sure that I have as much time as I can to spend with my child. And, and money is the main factor when it comes to that real relationship between parent and children right now. So, Ms. Arlena, what inspired you for the work that you do, the community involvement and things? What inspired you to be so just in the work that you do today? My eight-year-old. My eight-year-old has been a, a, a strong advocate for her mother from day one. I, I, she might couldn't have talked and said anything to me, but until I became a parent, I really didn't have anything to worry about but Zerlina. Once I became a parent, education mattered to me for the choices that I made for the education that my daughter would receive. When I became a parent, home ownership meant a lot to me. I wanted to home, own a home and raise my daughter in it. When I became a parent, I wanted to have a job to, to be able to sustain a lifestyle for my daughter to not have to worry about how I'm going to pay my lights, my gas, or if she's going to eat, and not depending on basic public services, uh, social services. So we have to look at our children as our anchor because my daughter is my anchor. She's, she's the reason I get up every day and I organize around basic community issues. And I see we have another caller. Caller, thank you so much for calling. Your comment or question, please. What is a parent cafe? Mm, That's been great. About parent cafe. Yes, and the parent cafe is one of the best places to meet. We actually do not. I'm gonna say food because it's not refreshments. Um, we actually get full at the parent cafes. Right. The Parent Cafe pretty much is just like a, a round table discussion with a group of diverse parents, male, female. At this point, it's open to anyone who would like to come. Um, we do have a board for mothers who care and fathers who care, but to become a member, the Parent Cafe is open to everyone, and we talk about mm -hmm. basic life skills, um, job training, whatever it is that that person needs, and we figure out a way to assist one another in getting it done. Okay. The next caller. Hello, caller. Thank you so much for calling. Your comment or question, please. Can you be a friend to your child while parenting them? Ooh, that's a big one. Of course. I have 13 nieces and nephews. Um, well, I think you need to develop a friendship. Everything is like a relationship. I don't care how we look at it, whether it's a husband and wife. Having a relationship with your child is very, very important, not just as a parent, but as a friend. Because if your child feels as though they can't come to you and say anything to you without being judged or, or um, stricken down, then you don't have a relationship. And we want to always let our kids know that we are the parents, first and foremost. But having that friendship, I believe, is, is what's going to hold that parent and that child together for the long run. So, Miss 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 Arlena. So you're saying that it's okay to be a friend to your child. Correct? Yes, I am. Uh, it, 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 friendship has limitation. I'm not saying okay. go out and hang okay. and party and kick it with okay. your child. I'm okay. saying have a relationship where you can mm -hmm. understand what your child is going through, where you mm -hmm. can spend that extra time with your child, whether it's mother and daughter day where you go out one day a week and you hang out with just your child. Mm -hmm. 
the friendship has to have guidelines because first and foremost, never forget you are the parent. Mm -hmm. And we want the kids to always have that respect, not just for you as a parent, <clears throat> but for other parents as well. Next caller. Hello, caller. Thank you so much for calling. Your comment or question, please. Hi there. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Um, it's really great to see such a um, strong, educated, um, intelligent woman um, on TV and to know that you're influencing young people is wonderful. My question is, um, you know, as, as a woman, it's great that you can give advice to, to young girls. I think especially in high school is a time where they're so um, um, moldable, I guess you can say. Um, so I wanted to ask kind of a two-part question. One is what what's advice that you would give um, knowing now what you know to girls in high school? But on the flip side of it, too, is um, we need more boys and men to support women and um, understand what they go through and um, just be partners for them. So what advice would you give to uh, young men in high school when it comes to supporting, um, you know, the opposite gender? Hmm. That's a hard question. Um, considering most of our young men grew up without fathers, um, it makes it really hard for them to know how to treat someone of the opposite sex because we don't know what they have experienced growing up. But what I will say to you, when, when you look at ways to support our youth with Increase the Harvest, Mothers Who Care, Fathers Who Care, um, all these great organizations that are doing the work, we're, we're going to take our kids on camping trips, full, full mentoring, full advocacy as far as what it takes to become a young adult. So we do have a great line of strong, positive role models that are men that come from very diverse backgrounds, women as well. So to... To answer your question about how our men is, are going to treat our girls is kind of difficult for me, but I think that mm -hmm. it takes a man to raise a man. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, another question, uh, Ms. Zerlina. How can we engage more mothers to be actively involved in the lives of their children? Um, come hang out with me so I can tire you out. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it's... Being engaged sounds like a job for us to spend time with our children. Mm -hmm. In the Parent Cafe, the children are welcome as well. We mm -hmm. want to create curriculums where parents can do things together with their children. When we start taking our trips with mothers who care and fathers who care start taking their trip, we're going to do co-ed trips as well, whereas we teach our children how to cook. We teach our children how to do financial literacy. We're going to do so many things as a component, not just with the children, because whatever we teach the kids right now, if they're not learning that at home as soon as they leave us they're going to forget it so we want to make sure that it's an entity for all people and the parents mainly are the the glue that holds it all together so mm -hmm. happens every time the more you talk the more calls <laughs> we get i tell you you are on fire so that's a good thing yes it, it definitely is okay hello carla thank you so much for calling you're on the air with Ms. Arlena smith your comment or question please hi Angela. Uh, how are you Oh, I'm getting you. Thank you. Um, my question was, how can I get my mother to be more involved in the community? Mm. Uh, you know what? I'm going to be real honest with you. You can't get your mother involved to do anything. Your mom has to want to do it. But if she's willing to be a part of a sisterhood, all she has to do is call the same number with the youth um, council for the West Garfield, which is 312-738-1060, and leave a message. We're all connected as one. We're, we don't have multiple lines, multiple emails. You call one spot and you'll get us all. And getting involved is coming out and getting to see the wonderful work we do. We clean up our community. We, we advocate for our children and our people that look like us, that's around us. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning in, my name is David Elam, and I'm the President Emeritus of the West Garfield Park Youth Council. And my guest this evening is Miss, the lovely Miss Zarlena Smith. And we're discussing the topic of effective parenting in the lives of our young people. And uh, we invite young people from all over to please come out and join the West Garfield Park Youth Council. We meet every Monday from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. at 4540 West Washington Boulevard. A few of the things that we discuss over at the West Garfield Park Youth Council, preventing all forms of substance abuse, school and gang violence, anti-bullying, cyberbullying, teen dating awareness, being learning how to be a learning how not to be a victim of peer pressure, conflict resolution, 
youth empowering their community, and my favorite one of all, how to promote a safe and drug-free community. And I see we have another caller. Hello, caller. Thank you so much for calling. Your comment or question, please. How should a young woman in today's society present herself? Hmm. How should a young woman in today's society present herself? As a woman, leave something to the imagination. Um, my friends laugh at me all day long. If you see me, I've always covered up for whatever reason. I don't know. I just always been taught that. Um, first impressions are everlasting impression. And when we want our young men to respect us, we have to show respect from ourselves first. Mm -hmm. And if she presents herself as a video vixen and he approaches her in such a way, mm -hmm. she has no reason to be upset with him because he's only getting what she's projecting. So I think a woman should, young, old, should always make sure that they look in the mirror before they hit the door. Mm -hmm. So it's safe to say... In order for someone to treat you right, you have to treat yourself right, correct? Yes, yes. Right. Most definitely, most definitely. Uh, next caller. Hello, caller. Thank you so much for calling. Your comment or question, please. Um, What resources do you provide for young people? The resources that we provide for young people. Now, mind you, we first started off with saying thank you and making a special announcement for the Yes Leadership Academy, mm -hmm. which is the youth unemployment program and the event that's happening June 12th at Tr Tilton Park, right? Mm -hmm. At 6 p.m. So we want to make sure that resources are there. If you have, if you are of working age, there are jobs that are available and we collaborate not just with one organization, an abundance of organizations. If you have a background, we still make sure we get you employment. If you want to get back in school, we make sure we get you in school. If you need housing, we make sure we get you housing. If you need food, we make sure we feed you. Every Wednesday, we're out on the corner of Central and Cochrane feeding the community and giving back. So one thing about this collaboration of mothers who care and fathers who care with anchoring Increase the Harvest is making sure that everyone knows that what we can do, we have another organization that can do something else for you. Okay, and my last question, Ms. Uh, Zarlina. What attributes should a mother instill in her children? the ones that she wants to reflect upon her. I mean, we have to lead by example, people. Um, my attributes for my daughter is, you know, make sure you can take care of yourself when I'm not around. Make sure you know how to have the basic necessities to maintain and sustain a lifestyle that you feel is comfortable. Because we never know what our children are going to do as they grow up. But while they're under our care or under our roofs, as my mama used to say, well, as long as you're in my roof, you're going to go to school. You're going to clean your room. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. We have to lay down some type of law or rules to um, start governing our kids now. Because there's a sign in the Cook County Jail that says, if you don't spend time with your child now, we will later. Mm. Well, Ms. Zerlina, I just want to say thank you once again for thank being you. our guest this evening. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as I stated before, the West Garfield Park community stakeholders in collaboration with the West Garfield Park Youth Council and Fathers Who Care will be hosting its annual monthly community forum which will be taking place June 12th at 6 o'clock p.m. That address will be at will be at 230 North Comar. That's the Tilton Park District. For more information about that event and other upcoming events that we have coming up, please contact our main office, which is Fathers Who Care, at 773-287-5821. Again, at 773-287-5821. Tune in next week, same time, same place. We love you. God bless you. Good night. Good night.